You know how those bank cash counters can arrange money like a stack of money? Mind you, those cash counters now scan the serial number of every bill and preserve a database of every serial of every bit that they scan. Those cash registers are now properly networked and here is the situation. The same thing is going on with our mail. The United States Postal Service. Every piece of mail has its address and information photographed. And these are just some of the difficulties we are currently facing. They interpret it as implying that they have no idea what you spent that money on. They know this guy placed money at this bank, which led to this business. The last time the system saw this bill was over in this state, or that money was withdrawn by this individual at that moment. The system was at large, and we have no understanding how these programs are used by the federal government. We have no notion how banks used to undertake this type of spreading and connection analysis. Now, cryptocurrency and by this, I simply mean Bitcoin is completely and utterly failing on the privacy front. People prefer to look at what it actually does, as I've indicated before. Tacker does not address the issue of Bitcoin's privacy, and some argue that the fragmented address space makes it worse by making forensic flow analysis easier. They sent a payment to this wallet, which is utilizing an old address. This new person had a new address, but the changed address had reverted to the previous one. Even though there is just one input, one of the outputs can be identified as a payment. That one was a refund or exchange situation. That shouldn't be the case. It has no justification to occur. We see a lot of privacy currencies and Zhash, as I mentioned before, is the finest in the industry with their protected transactions. The concerns that these transactions do not happen by default are correct, and they should, in my opinion, be done by default. There are other cryptocurrencies such as Monero, a proxy coin that is having a hard time becoming listed on exchanges that provides privacy by default. That is having a hard time becoming listed on exchanges that provides privacy by default. They're just playing a shell game, but it's a lower level of privacy, and those shell games aren't going to persist forever, especially as technology improves. They're both wonderful initiatives though, and there are other privacy currency available as well. However, as you indicated, we are seeing an increase in the disdain for privacy in exchanges, which is worrying. Making Bitcoin private is the only way to fix this and bring it into the mainstream. I'm talking about the most major change. I'm not talking about adding another layer or two. I'm not referring to the antics of lightning. A cryptocurrency must be built with privacy in mind. Once you have normalized it, it's quite frustrating. I believe that the Bitcoin core development team has not prioritized many people in space. This is because the longer they wait, the more barriers will be erected to prevent this from happening. Exchanges can delist Bitcoin right now. Therefore, the sooner we take use of it, the better. And storing a lot was never the norm. Much of this originated in the aftermath of September 11 with counter-terrorism financing. We want terrorists to transmit money flows by a Bank of America because we know what they're doing. Just like we want counter-terrorism financing through Bank of America, we already know who will. We can knock on their door and make an offer to purchase their home. Because we struck through these, the way we deal with these is insane. We'll panic if there are no policies. I don't think it was necessary, but I believe it is vital. September 11, however, is not a precedent. We don't want to live in that world until the end of time. That isn't going to change unless someone changes the Bitcoin protocol's concept. The peer-to-peer -peer electronic branch system is based on the premise that we can transmit payments to anyone without their consent, which is true if the money is in your wallet. But how do people fill those wallets? They get it through exchanges, and these guys are imposing commissioning steps that act as an intermediary in the transaction. And the only way to get around that is to allow some kind of purification step right before the transaction where we remove all the paint 
all of the identity is removed. At this external level, we remove all the crust that has been imposed. Return the principle of direct training by removing this external layer from the system. We are unable to direct congressmen. There will be no direct interaction with anyone until we understand this and enforce it. Or at the very least, provide the possibility through the protocol level. Crypto has yet to reach its full potential. Even if we step away from privacy, there are other issues. We know China is experimenting with its digital currency and one of the most fascinating ideas that has been written about according to Bloomberg is that they may issue one with an expiration date. They are the ones who own the wallet and distribute them. They produce tokens. They have complete control over their scripts which makes them ideal for economic stimulus. We can give you money and then take it away if you don't utilize it. But the idea that anyone, anywhere can take your money is horrifying. How can anyone suggest we're all going back to gold at that point? Like squirrels digging in the dirt and burying acorns. You know, there is a legitimate point to be made that has been done for thousands of years. That's why you'll occasionally come across caches of buried coins in England. It's because people understand why you need to be able to hold value in some way. I'm sure you could tell us a little bit more about when things started to shift away from the previous paradigm. Things used to be measured in terms of what the government could extract from banks and your track record is no longer relevant. The government doesn't need a warrant or anything because it's the bank's records. If you ask many of these folks individually, I believe they would tell you. They have apparently become immensely welcomed as a result of the current arrangement and this puts a lot on the line. I'm not implying that they lack morals. That is not what I'm saying. I'm implying that they recognize how valuable they are to themselves and to others. We bought into these systems through milk rocking and it's important to remember that the boat can sometimes be bigger than the pulp and right now, they're all terrified of being capsized in the German Ocean. But they are in a puddle and it's raining. The puddle is growing and I believe they need to grasp that these things must be established before the thought of, hey, we can do it. That is an excellent statement. But it also demonstrates where we are lacking, preparing for the event, and we're terrible at scanning. You go to the subway and don't want to pay with cash since you don't want your ticket to be linked to your card because you attended the demonstration. That's fantastic. That's reasonable. Perfect suggestion. At the same time, you're carrying your phone and their cell phone tower is a protest site because your cell phone towers may be found all around the city and your phone is linked to your SIM card. A telecoms firm is linked to your SIM card. This is linked to your payment information by the telecommunications operator. The phone company is still aware that you are at the protest site. 